That'll be our closing hymn today. Uh, as we come together today, we uh, uh, first of all welcome to the service of worship for the Sunday morning, October 16th, 2022, and a warm welcome to anyone who's joining us on the live stream as well. It was kind of interesting after the service last Sunday, uh, I had three text messages, I think, within about five minutes of the service ending uh, from a senior's residence in, in Montreal where they had uh, uh, eight or 10 people, I think, watching our service and taking part in our service. Uh, and friends from uh, uh, the other side of Peterborough who texted and say how much they appreciated the service and wanted their Thanksgiving included in our, our Thanksgiving and, uh, and uh, prayer chain there. Uh, and Ray and Lo Lois Jameson were also away in, I think, Myrtle Beach or something, and they, uh, they asked to include theirs too and said how much they appreciate the fact that even when they're away on vacation, they can still be a part of our worship services. So. Um, it's great to be together, and again, welcome to anyone who's joining us on live stream. Um, are there any announcements from the congregation? There are a few that were up on the screen a bit earlier, and you can uh, catch them later. Uh, one quick thing that we're planning a family fun night to talk about children and youth ministry here at the church, and uh, we're going to actually do that on the 29th of October instead of the 22nd, because uh, there's other, other things happening on the 22nd, so uh, just a warning about that. And anyone is welcome to come to that. You don't have to have children and youth to come. Just uh, it'll be a pizza night here at the church and uh, play some games and uh, like board games and things that you bring. And then we'll talk about what we can do next in children and youth ministry. Are there any other announcements from the congregation? Seeing none, let's take a moment, calm our hearts and still our minds and prepare ourselves for worship.
I invite you to stand for our call to worship, and Marcus is going to lead us this morning. God promises us justice and teaches us persistence. God promises us compassion and teaches us not to lose heart. God promises to be with us and teaches us to take care of each other. So let us worship our God of comfort, comfort and challenge. We offer prayers and praise to our God of hope and beauty. Let us worship God. Let's remain standing for our opening hymn. We have this ministry. It's number 590 in your hymn books, or uh, you can follow along on the screen. Please be seated. Let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. God of truth and justice, we come to this place to learn your way, to celebrate your teaching and truth, to give thanks for the hope you offer to us and to all people. Show us your way, O oh God. Encourage us on our journeys that we might pray without ceasing, that we might listen to your word of justice, that we might be your people seeking to live justice each day. Forgive us, God, and write your law on our hearts. Forgive us, God. Help us to trust in your presence always. Patient God, you have compassion for all people. You encourage us to trust in you, and yet we often prefer to trust in ourselves. Free us, God, from times when we may feel helpless. Free us from times when we imagine that things cannot change in our world. Free us from times when we are afraid to risk finding new meaning in our lives. Help us always to feel your love and care your hope and encouragement. We ask this in Jesus' name and pray together with Jesus' words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear the good news of the gospel and hear the words of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more, God says through Jeremiah. And thanks be to God for that gift. Amen. Now's the time for the ministry of music. I have a question for you. Um, have you ever had something that you really, really wanted, but you couldn't get it, and someone else was telling you, no, you can't have that? I think about that back when I was a kid, but has anyone ever had that experience, something you really, really wanted, but someone else says, no, you can't? All the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Any examples? I see lots of nodding. Anyone got an example of something? <laughs> you want to go see Mean Girls at the NAC? And Robert said no. Yeah. Someone keeps saying no. Daniel, you had one as well? Yeah. When you were little, you really wanted to drive the car, and we kept saying no, you can't. Yeah. Still think that was pretty reasonable, but yeah. That's right. Yeah. Daniel's goal at that point was to. Uh, Teach other children how to drive. That's, that was his life goal. Yeah. Any other things you want to, or wanted to do, but someone keeps saying no? Well, sometimes when you persevere, sometimes when you stick with it and you keep asking, keep asking, you do actually end up getting to do it in the end. I've got an example of that I'm going to mention in the sermon. That's kind of what the, the Bible story is today as well. It's about uh, a woman who, who uh, uh, went to a judge, a widow who went to the judge and wanted justice. We don't know what the issue was, but she wanted justice. 
And the judge said, said no, I'm not going to give you justice. And uh, she kept going back and back. And eventually, the judge finally relented, not because it was the right thing to do, but because he just got tired of her and got worn down. So uh, he said, OK. But in this story, Jesus says that, that God is looking for us to be, be patient and persistent in things, and that God, God will answer our prayers and answer our prayers quickly even though it doesn't always feel that way to us. Well, that idea of persistence in prayer and continuing to pray even when it doesn't seem like we're getting what we want. Um, so it's a little bit different than, you know, nagging someone so that they'll do what you want them to do, but it's that idea of persistence and sticking with things and persistence in prayer and that God does hear our prayers. And we'll hear more about that in the sermon time. But let's have a prayer together. I invite you to repeat after me if you like. Dear God, Dear God. we thank you for today. For the bright colors around us, for the changing seasons, for our church family. Help us to continue to pray to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our responsive reading is Psalm 121. You'll find it in the uh, red books in front of you, and also you'll see it up on the screen. And I invite Judith to come and lead us. Psalm 121 is a responsive psalm. It is a song of ascents. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The Lord who keeps you will not slumber. The one who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil, will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Correct? Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. Join together in singing our next hymn, O Day of God, Draw Nigh. It's number 786, or you'll see it on the screen.
Please be seated. Let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our God and our guide. Amen. I'm going to begin the sermon with the same question I asked in the children's time. Have you ever had something that you wanted to see happen or something that you really wanted, but someone or something stood in your way stopping you from getting it? Have you ever had that happen, that feeling of frustration, knowing that you want something? I remember this happening to me mostly when I was young. And I really wanted to get, say, a cat or a dog and asking over and over again and hoping that my parents will eventually change their answer from no to yes. The time I remember most clearly was when I was about 16 years old, and what I really wanted was a leather jacket. Not just any leather jacket, though it had to be a black leather jacket, and it had to be a biker jacket, a motorcycle jacket. It had to have the diagonal zipper on it, and you could fold the panel over the front and the wind wouldn't come in. And it had to be that really thick leather that would last forever. You know, something like Fonzie wrote on, wrote, wore on Happy Days. <laughs> and yes, I do realize I just dated myself. Of course, I didn't have a motorcycle. Well, not yet at any rate. But I really wanted that black leather jacket. And there was one problem. Parents. <laughs> they refused to let me get it. It wasn't a matter of money either, because I had the money. I'd been working part-time at McDonald's. I'd saved up enough to get the leather jacket, but they still wouldn't let me get it. I begged and pleaded over and over again, and still they wouldn't let me get it. They had their reasons, of course. What kind of image does a jacket like that give you? What does that portray about you? What kind of crowd you'll be hanging around if you're wearing one of those jackets? Apparently they saw happy days too. I countered with a very well thought out tirade about prejudice and about judging people based on what they wear or what they look like, appearance rather than who they really are. And by the way, I had similar discussions when at 15 I was getting my ear pierced, though that time I didn't ask permission, I just went and did it. (laughs) Anyway, none of these arguments worked with my parents. They wouldn't change their minds. So what could I do? They wouldn't budge. I decided that the only way I was going to get that jacket was to keep pestering them until eventually they gave in. So I tried and tried and pestered and pestered and they didn't give in. I can remember being so frustrated with them. I could not believe my plan of nagging relentlessly hadn't worked. Well, you know, until recently I thought that that's what the gospel reading was about this morning. I've heard it referred to as the the parable of the unjust judge, but also heard it referred to as the parable of the nagging widow. You know the story that we just heard read. The widow went to the judge seeking justice and was denied. She went back to the judge over and over and over again. We don't even know what the issue was for sure, but what she wanted was justice. And eventually he wore down and gave in. He gave in and granted the request not because it was the right thing to do, not because it was a just decision, but because he was tired of her pestering him. This widow keeps bothering me. I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. I guess that's what we hear in the unjust judge. That's what made him unjust. This has always been a challenge to me in interpreting this passage. Because the obvious parallel seems to be pester God enough, continue coming to God in prayer, and eventually God will grant your request. Or more piously put, persevere in prayer long enough, and God will grant that request. Not because your request is in keeping with God's will, though, 
but because like the unjust judge, God will get tired of hearing your voice and God will eventually give in. That doesn't seem right, does it? That's the way I've often heard it interpreted, though. But if you read the parable more carefully, this is a parable not about a nagging widow, but it's a parable about remaining faithful, even when prayers seem to go unanswered for a long time, and how God is not like the unjust judge. A couple of things about this parable. In the Gospel of Luke, it appears with another story about prayer, the story of the arrogant Pharisee and the humble tax collector praying in the temple together. And by the way, that's going to be next week's sermon, so stay tuned and come on back. Secondly, in the, in the, uh, a bit of history about widows in Jesus' day. Widows were entitled to nothing when their husbands died, as I understand it. If they had male children, the husband's assets would be given to the firstborn or divided among the children. If the widow had no sons, all of her assets then would go to his brother or the next closest male relative. Now, there was a moral obligation on the part of family members to look after the widow, but it didn't always happen. The last resort, the widow goes to a judge to convince the family to take care, to provide for her in some way. Another important note in this parable is the use of the word justice. In this parable, we are told the widow was going to the judge seeking justice. Justice isn't a word that's just thrown around lightly in the Bible. She's going to seek justice, seeking what was right, and the judge seemed to be her last resort. Now, we are told the judge did not care about God or about people. He dismissed her case without even a thought, it seems. When the judge said the widow was out of luck, she had no higher court. She had no court of appeal beyond that. That was it, the judge. So she went back again and again so that he might reconsider the case. And he refused over and over again. And then the end relented because he was tired of being bothered by her. The unjust judge is not God in the parable. God is contrasted with the unjudged judge, unjust judge. We are like the widow, though, in the persistence that she showed. The widow had to go back over and over again because her cause was just, and she was seeking justice. In Jesus' parable, he tells us that God will not be like that unjust judge, that God will grant justice quickly to his children who call out to him day and night. God will bring justice quickly to his children who call out to him day and night. But the beginning of the parable also says that Jesus told this parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. If God was answering prayers so quickly, why would Jesus need to tell a parable about them praying constantly and not losing heart? The fact of the matter is that our prayers and the prayers of the world are not always answered all that quickly. The Psalms, the Book of Lamentations, are full of passages about people crying out to God day and night, faithfully listening for God's voice and not hearing the answer to their prayers. The Israelites were not suddenly released from captivity in Egypt or in Babylon because one person suddenly cried out to God and God said, okay, and brought them out. It was years. Even in Jesus' day, the Jewish people were living in an occupied land under horrendous conditions, oppressive taxation. They were praying fervently for release from this situation, and yet their prayers seemed to be going unanswered. Then even later, by the time Luke put pen to paper or quill to scroll and compiled his orderly account of Jesus' life, collecting Jesus' parables, putting them all in order so that they would make sense to his community, Decades had passed since Jesus' death at that point, and Luke's community was beginning to lose heart because they expected Jesus to come again. They were beginning to think that Jesus may not be coming again very soon. For decades, they've been praying the words, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And yet Jesus' kingdom had not come yet. God's kingdom had not come. And so as Luke collected the parables for his faith community, a community frustrated with waiting for Jesus' return, 
he reminded them of Jesus' parable of perseverance. And Luke wrote these words. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. The words made sense to them. The assurance was there. God will answer the prayers for justice. We need to keep praying always and not lose heart. But in our fast food, fast lifestyle, instant gratification world, that kind of perseverance seems unreasonable. How often do we spend even five minutes in prayer, not to mention half an hour, an hour, all night, as Jesus used to do? We pray for something, and part of us expects, or at least hopes, that it'll be delivered to us as fast as a cup of coffee at the Tim Hortons drive through window, and not on a Saturday morning, on like a Tuesday afternoon, or as fast as your Uber Eats might be delivered to your house, at least. Jesus told us, pray always and do not lose heart. It's hard not to lose heart, though, sometimes, though, isn't it? I've sat with many family members beside their, their beds in hospitals, with the individuals in their homes praying for healing, praying for wholeness, praying for relief from the injustice of cancer, from other illnesses, from other diseases. I've prayed with families for months and even years on end for a cure for mental illness or addiction. I've seen many who thought they were going to die live a little bit longer, and others that thought they were very ill, weren't very ill, suddenly die. I've also prayed with people for death to come, for it to come gently, for it to come quickly, and seen those people live on for months and even years. Today we pray for peace in Ukraine, for help for the people of Pakistan with flooding, and for understanding and reconciliation here in Canada. Pray always, and do not lose heart, Jesus said. But it's hard not to lose heart sometimes, because from where we sit, it doesn't always look like justice in our world. And yet, there are times when our prayers do seem to be answered in the way we ask for them. I've seen people with cancer go into remission and live long and healthy lives. I've seen death come to people as a comfort, even untimely death. We don't know why things happen, when they do, or how they do. We do not understand the mind of God or many of the ways of diseases. And yet we continue to pray, not knowing what the outcome will be. Often the most comforting prayer is to fall back on Jesus' own words and say, not my will, but your will be done, O God. Pray always, and do not lose heart. You know, I'm also often amazed how often in prayer the answer I get has nothing to do with the requests that I'm making. I can be praying about one thing, and for some reason God puts something completely different into my mind. For a long time I saw those things as a distraction or an inability to focus on what I was actually doing. But I've begun to listen to those changes in my prayers. When I'm praying for something and God puts a different idea in my head, a different Im image, a different person. And I wonder where God is leading me. And so I listen to what God says. I listen to the distractions instead of, instead of waiting just for God to answer my laundry list of requests. I think prayer is quite often more about God changing us than it is about us changing God's mind on a matter. This doesn't mean we stop praying for the things we want, for things that weigh heavily on our hearts, because they don't disappear and they don't change. We persevere in prayer for those things and we do not lose heart. But sometimes God has another plan for our lives and other things to say that might be more important than answering our requests on our timeline. In the parable of the unjust judge, Jesus teaches us to pray always and not to lose heart. He assures us that God hears our prayers, and although God does not always grant our requests in ways that we may not see, God does grant justice to those who cry out to him. Oh yeah, 
my leather jacket. My parents did eventually give in, and I got my leather jacket. And it was a black leather jacket. And we did go through one dog and three cats when I was growing up. The turning point, though, in the leather jacket was when my Aunt Pat came to visit, my dad's sister. She heard us talking about this leather jacket issue, and she innocently asked my dad, do you still have that leather jacket you had when you were a teenager? <laughs> and that was when Pat became my favorite aunt. <laughs> a shout out to Eddie Pat if you're watching today, and to my dad. I got the black leather jacket, and I got my ear pierced, and I got a motorcycle, and I think I turned out okay in the end, mostly, I think. May God give us hope to fill our hearts with the joy of his will. May Christ Jesus continue to teach us to pray always without losing heart. And may God's Holy Spirit uphold us in the times when God seems to be silent. In Jesus' name, amen. We have been richly blessed in this life with so many different things. We give thanks to God for all these things. I'm reminded of all the thanksgiving we have in the chain behind us and so many more. I was also gonna say, if you think of other things you're thankful for, I'm gonna have slips of paper out for the next while. And if you write some things down and leave them on the table, I'll add them to the paper chain. Things you're thankful for or things you'd like God's help with as well. One of the ways we give thanks to God is with our tithes and offerings. And I see Marlene standing at the back, so I'm going to invite her to bring the offering forward as we sing the doxology. Please stand. Let us pray. For your grace and goodness, O oh God, we give you thanks. For these gifts shared with us that we can share with others, we give you thanks and praise. Now we ask that they might be used in this community and beyond to bring light where there is darkness, to bring hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. We also continually pray for the people of Ukraine in particular. We pray for peace. We pray for a peaceful path forward in ways that the world can help. We also pray for the people of Russia, many of whom don't want to see this happening either. We pray for peace and for humility and for a wise path forward. We pray as well for the people of Poland who are hosting the refugees from Ukraine. We pray for a way the world can respond even more effectively with help for the people of Poland. And we thank you that the people of Poland are there to help. We pray as well for safe travels for anyone who's traveling right now or soon to be traveling and safe home as well. We know there's an added level of anxiety that comes with traveling at this time. We pray for peace. We pray for the people of Haiti as well. In the midst of a horrendous situation there, we pray for ways that we as an international community can help. We pray for the people of Iran and the leadership of Iran. We pray for change. We pray for peace. We continue to pray for the people of the Maritimes as well, some of them still living without power. We 
We pray for them, O God, and for patience and for help. Now in silence, we also bring your own individual prayers, and some of them are deep inside us, and some of them are really close to the surface. In silence, we pray without ceasing. In silence, we also listen. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's join together in our closing hymn. You'll see a whole bunch of words on the screen. Pick some of the ones you like and sing them out when the time comes. <laughs> Please stand. Oh, 
You got it. Again, that was perfect. <laughs> we go to the world that surrounds us knowing that there are problems in our world, knowing there are problems in our lives, and Jesus says, continue to pray. Continue to ask for the things you need and the things you want, and God is listening. Now may the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us this day and every day. Go now in peace. Our sung benediction is going to be Lord Jesus Christ, lover of all.